In this episode of our new safety and rescue series, we're asking ourselves the questions, how can it be safer or more responsible? And what do we do if something goes wrong? And this is really designed for rafters. So this net whole video I'm about to do is for rafters. And I want to cover three things in terms of PFDs, good flotation and fit, the value of rescue PFDs and the types of PFDs. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there or things I think are actually incorrect. And I want to share my opinions and I want to be clear. These are my opinions based on my experience about a number of things about PFDs. And so the first thing is I think you need a good fitting PFD and I'm going to say flotation is a really good thing. Some people will say you want a low flow vest, swim easier, or you want a low flow vest because if you go into a hole, you can get sucked to the bottom. I'm going to disagree with those things. I can swim just fine in a higher flow PFD. And actually it elevates me higher above out of the water. So more of my body is out of the water. And since air has less drag than water, I will swim better. Now, if I'm, if I'm in a big bulky 40 pound PFD yet, I'm not going to swim well in that, but this is the NRS. I think it's the pro guide or something, a 22.9 pound flotation vest, way better than something like this. That's 16 pounds. And so I'm going to make the claim flotation is really good. And fit is really good too. You want to be comfortable and you want to be agile. Uh, you want to cover your belly. If you're pear shaped, something like the green jacket, a low flow PFD is just not appropriate because it's not going to cover your pear. And this NRS PFD is the only one of these designed for rafting. These are all, every PFD people are using the green jacket, the blue jacket, all these jackets are designed for kayaking where you're sitting down legs forward and you're bending over a lot. And so you do want them to sit high for kayaking. For rafting, you want that flotation down low. And so having a PFD that goes down low is super important. This is the only one of these that I have this design for rafting. And I'm gonna say this is a really good PFD in terms of fit and flotation for a lot of people. And so you want, again, you want to cover your, your pair if you have a pair and flotation is really, really good. And you wanna make sure it's tight. Of course, having it tight all the time, tightening all of these things is crucial. And I know having them look cool is really important. You're more likely to wear it if it looks cool. I get that. Uh, but this one looks pretty cool. Um, visibility is also a nice thing. This one's a nice bright yellow. I think it's nice to see. The downside of this one to me is it looks a little dorky and it doesn't have great pockets. I like the clamshell pocket in most modern PFDs. I can open this up easily, get to things. There's side storage. Uh, and, the, and the green jacket, there's side storage here. In other PFDs, there's other side storage. This thing has these two big pockets. I put my flip line in this one, which takes up all of it. And it's the only thing I can put in this, this pocket because if I put other stuff in and grab my flip line, it'll fall out. And this one's for my accessories, including my knife. And so I can quickly get to my knife. But if I start putting a bunch of stuff in here, I won't have quick access to my knife. I don't personally like external knives. That's an opinion. We can get into that later separately. I like the internal knife in my pocket. So I'm not stoked on the pocket on this, but I'd rather have the flotation. Another big thing with the PFT is you want a very sleek front. If you're pulling yourself up into a raft, you don't want things here that grab. You don't want something that sticks out too far. And or if somebody's pulling you in, if you're being pulled into a raft, somebody's grabbing your PFD and pulling you in, you don't want things that grab on the perimeter line or just other stuff on the raft. So having a very sleek front, I think is really good. And I think this PFD accomplishes that. So flotation and fit, super important things to me in terms of your PFD. Next, I want to talk about rescue PFDs. And I'm going to say something here that is going to irritate a lot of people and cause some, some discussion maybe, or some nasty comments. I'm going to claim that those of you that raft don't really need what's known as a rescue PFD. Now these, the rescue PFD means there's this little, little thing in the back, this little thing, and there's a, a waist belt that goes around and something you can tighten to then clip a rope to this and then go for a swim attached to a rope. And first of all, I think that's a pretty dangerous technique that requires train, not only training, like education, but practice and training afterwards. So this isn't something you kind of do willy nilly, uh, first of all. Second of all, just because it's called a rescue PFD doesn't mean you need this PFD to do a rescue. I can do rescues in this PFD too. I can pull swimmers into a raft. I can swim out to a raft and pull it off of a rock. Uh, I can, um, I don't know, stand on shore and throw a throw bag. I can rescue people in this PFD too. I don't have to have a special rescue PFD to do rescues. The only specific rescue that I think it's really good at, again, is tying yourself to a rope and going for a swim. 
there are very few cases, if any, of people who are rafters who have used their rescue PFD with a rope attached to them to go out there and, and save a life. That I, I know, I just don't have any. People have given me examples. Like I use my rescue PFD to save a paddle or to get a raft out of an eddy. Or a lot of times I hear the story and they did something, they could have just swum out there to do it. They didn't need to be attached to a rope. The rope adds a lot of danger. And these buckles don't always come loose. So if you're you attached to it and you go pull the release buckle, there's been a study that they don't always come loose, especially if you have a long lead. And so this is a this is a Mustang Rescue PFD. This is for professional rescuers. I think it's adequate for it's got great flotation, like 25 pounds uh, for rafting. So this is one if you want to get for rafting, might be a decent one. But a lot of people have these long tails, and this tail has to feed through the system and it gets bound if it's long. So if you're going to wear a Rescue PFD, you need to cut this down, and it should be about as long as your, your fist over it. Like I should cut this one down to there. You want these tails short. Don't go guiding your rafting with this thing flapping around if you're deciding to wear it. But I just don't see the value in this toe tether system, this thing for rafting. Now for me, I wear it sometimes. I kayak and raft. And so I wear my kayaking PFD rafting. And I do see value in the rescue harness for kayaking. And so I, I do see it. It's good for safety kayaking. Uh, we can get into that in a separately, but those of you that are rafting, I just don't think you need it. And so I think a lot of people buy this green jacket. They think this is the coolest thing out there. And there's some big disadvantages to this jacket. One is this designed for kayaking. It sits really high. Again, those of you pear shaped, it doesn't, it doesn't float. It's not going to float you well. It's going to sit too high. Second of all, people don't need this rescue harness. So I'm going to advocate for rafters, not using the Astro green jacket. I don't think it's a good option. The Astro Blue Jacket, though, is great. It doesn't have the rescue harness. It has side entry. It doesn't have a lot of flotation. These both have the minimum amount of flotation. But if, if you want to look cool, I would say go for the non-rescue harness version. Full rafting specifically than the harness version. This PFD, this is the Astro YTV, is minimal. It is nothing. This thing has the same flotation as the green jacket. Costs less, and it's almost nothing. If you're just don't like wearing PFDs, that's wrong. You should wear a PFD, you should just wear one. Please wear one. But if you need a suntan, like just go tanning on the beach. Or get get this one, at least wear this. I don't think you should, I think you should have a better one than this. But if you're gonna wear a minimal PFD, this thing is almost unnoticeable. At least throw this thing on. It has as much flotation as the green jacket, so it's really good. So again, I'm not into rescue PFDs for rafting. If you think you need one, Cool, do it. And if you disagree with me and want to tell me some story about how you saved a paddle, please tell me the story. I want to hear it. But if you actually saved a life, I really want to hear the story because these are pretty rare stories. Okay, last thing I want to talk about are PFD types. PFDs are typed one, two, three, four, and five. And it's unfortunate that they use the same system as classifications of raft because there's class one, two, three, four, five. Some people put those together like, oh, I'm going class five rafting. I need a type five PFD. That's, they don't correlate like that. They're just unfortunately like have the same type of style. So uh, the way it works is one and two are like life preservers or like life jackets. These are meant if you fall out of a sailboat in the ocean or like a cruise ship or your plane crashes in the ocean. They're meant to put you on your back, ideally if you're unconscious, and float you for a long time. That's type one and two in a nutshell. Type three are what we're used to. They're made for paddling. They're made for... If you need to get under stomach and aggressively swim, you can. They're not going to just put you on your back. They're also meant for having rescuers close by. And so when you're wearing a Type 3 PFD, for like rafting, for example, it's not intended for you just to go for a long, indefinite swim. It's intended for you to swim, aggressively self-rescue, and have other people nearby to help rescue you. So this is a Type 3 right here. It has 22.9 pounds of flotation. No frills, no big deal. Type 3 PFD. The Blue Jack, also Type 3 PFD. Okay, type 4 means throwable device. That could be a throw cushion. We don't use type 4 PFDs in, um, in white water, so that's not nothing to worry about. Type 5 just means special use. Type 5 does not mean rescue jacket. It just means special use. A rescue harness makes a PFD type 5, but it doesn't necessarily mean that type 5 means it's a rescue jacket. And again, remember, you can rescue people in any PFD. You don't have to have a rescue jacket to do rescues. So here's a different one. This is the Stolquist Descent. I really like this PFD. 
It has the rescue harness. This is a Type 5 PFD. It's a special use. The PFDs we use for our commercial guests with the head flap behind it are also Type 5. Because the head flap is a special use. It's a unique thing. It's, 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 it's an added thing. I'm pretty sure it's Type 5 because of the neck flap. Right? And, and for whatever reason, some agencies require Type 5 PFDs. And so that makes people put neck flaps on them so that we have Type 5 PFDs. But you could make the claim that, that you could, they should make a flotation minimum and not a type thing, but whatever. This is a type 5 PFD. That's the problem is this minimal flotation tiny thing is also type 5. It's special use. I think it's type 5 because it's over the head. It's not like side zipper or whatever, buckled down the middle. So just being type 5 doesn't mean anything. This has no rescue harness, minimal flotation. This thing is nothing, but it's type 5. So type 5 is just like kind of special use. But the key is for us boating, our PFDs are intended for us to get on our stomachs and actively perform a self-rescue. Swim somewhere and get somewhere uh, in order to, to, to be helped if we fall in the water. So those are my thoughts and opinions about PFDs. My thoughts are not complete. My thoughts probably aren't even correct. They're just my opinions and my thoughts based on my experience, my training, and my background. If you have different thoughts, smarter thoughts, you think I'm wrong, put that in the comments below. That's how I learn. I feel like I feel like right now everything I said is correct and just brilliant and I I think that absolutely just like super styled on this topic. But somebody's going to comment comment and be like, "Oh no, I saved like 10 lives with the, with the rescue harness." That'll change my opinion. If I have data and information, that'll change my opinion. I don't think that's gonna happen because I asked over and over and over, how many lives have you saved with your rescue vest, your rescue vest? And all I hear about is paddles being saved and like a boat, somebody got a boat easier. But anyway, if you have thoughts, opinions, corrections, please put them in the comments below. That's how I learn, that's how I get better and I can hopefully provide better information the next time I do a video like that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, see you next time.